stuff. So try to behave. Yeah. I'm talking to myself, actually. Craig, behave. All right, what are we at? February 25th? 26th. 26th. Yeah. 26th, 2021. 022621. Is there any numerology in that? I think there's not. Um, so we had this talk last week. And um, so I'm going to specifically name Ricky G. Thank you, Ricky, for uh, commenting the last two weeks that there was no video. And it's because of audio. Ricky that I, I knew there was no audio. And then, like, oh, dang it. So the whole basis of these is audio. I have a few visual things, but last week was loaded, as many of you know. And I never know um, where these are going to go. So last week, we kind of talked about the moon and the cycles of life. So there's a wheel of 28 days spins, right? You have a new moon, waxing, waning moon. So there's an energy. It's a yang energy, an increasing now, solar fire versus lunar fire is quite an interesting conversation, too, like moonlight versus sunlight, because the moon has a fire about it, but it's not a hot fire, is it? Yeah, it's not a hot fire. It's really interesting. It's like, yeah. Um, so right now, it's tomorrow, it's, it's got, it probably hovers a little bit, right? There's like, probably like 48 hours where it kind of looks full or feels full, yeah, and then it, yeah. you know, wanes and... So we're in the, uh, so during a daytime, then the next fractal down would be a day, then that would be equivalent to about midday to about two or 3 p.m. Where the solar light is the highest, right? On the full moon, the lunar light is the highest, correct? Okay. So what I've spent my life learning are these little wheels. There's, there's daily wheels, monthly wheels, yearly wheels. There's uh, cosmic wheels where our solar system's orbiting something. We're orbiting the sun, but the sun's also orbiting the center of the galaxy. So I mentioned this a little bit last week. We're actually traveling in space. We're actually traveling in a helix through space. Because we're traveling around the sun, but then the sun's also moving. So we're doing this. And that's what the natives called this turtle island. They were very, very adept at reading all this. And that's pretty much what I got fascinated with as a teenager. I broke my neck was... What is this dog and pony show we call life? As Adishanti, that's a broad from Adishanti actually, the dog and pony part. I, I give him too much credit probably, but um, he's, he's worthy of it. So I, I had to know, and um, he had a real similar story. I was like one of those, like I, I got the bug at uh, age 25. I had an experience that I couldn't deny, which is my business slogan. I'm here to give you an experience you can't deny. Because once you have an experience, you can't change that. You can change a concept, you can change a belief very quickly, but you can never change the experience you just had. And, um, and an awakening one is like that, or a health awakening is huge. So I, I, I had a few experiences. I, I was like, wait. And I had forgotten that I was talking to spirits as a kid. Right. I think I told you guys last week, I shut that off about age four or five when my mom caught me talking to invisible friends in this little back door closet in this bedroom and um it just turned the switch off and then in the 20s it started coming back as i broke my neck and what's the this is self-expression fifth energy center i won't use the chakra c word so this psycho spiritual energy center broke my neck i think the just great chess player in the sky moved the pieces just right so craig would open up and change his self-expression to the world and that's exactly what happened. Um, and then four years later, I was in this uh, Ram Das meditation, kind of like asking myself, who am I? What is all this? You know, I'm getting very sincere about it and following this breath. You pick a malt, you pick up, it's a Vipassana technique, but I didn't know what it was at the time. You pick a point and you breathe it in. And then you breathe it out. It's a good way to focus your mind. So follow that thing. And you think it's a straight line, but when air goes in your lungs, it's not a straight line. How is air actually going in your lungs? How is air actually? It's not going straight down. I would think it would be like wind, images of wind and water in circles. Spiral. Spiral. Yeah. If you, when you exhale, you can sometimes see it comes out. Like the, the you know, I love those guys. Like I grew up, my dad was a two pack a day smoker. So he would do that. Sometimes he would do the, the smoke. The rings. The smoke rings and all the fun, you know, good, good fun stuff. Uh, toxic. Tobacco, <laughs> chemical laden smokerings, and that, yeah. but nevertheless. 
Oh, yeah. So the point tonight then is, um, so what happened is I got curious about this thing because I had this experience of pure love. It's so into the breath that my mind actually collapsed is all I could say. And my experience of it was like a pop. And I popped into this other world that was less dense than this world. And there was a yellow sky and two planets off in the distance and looking around, feeling very loved. It's like something was holding me from underneath actually, but I didn't even know what I was. I was just looking at something going, oh no, that yellow sky. And then my mind, of course, many of us can understand this, starts going, oh, what's that tree over there doing? And let's see, what's the precise shape of that planet right there? And then the experience ended. Because it's not, you're the, Carlos Castaneda calls this the Nagual and the Tonal. The Tonal is the known world. The Nagual is the unknown world. And if you start analyzing the unknown world, it's a world of feelings. You can't analyze feelings very easily, can you? Not with this thing. You got to feel feelings and ride the waves. And so that was one of the techniques I used. Overeating was one, overexercising was another to avoid my feelings. So the you know, feeling of being loved was like, this is too good to be true, is what it was actually. I had a similar experience in my first yoga class at age 21 with Sonia Glassmeyer, uh, Hatha Yoga. She, um, her voice just sounded like love. And she taught the yoga class from a place of love. And I suspiciously watched her for weeks, for a weak link. It's too good to be true. No one's that happy. She's fake. You know that voice? Yeah, she's fake. No one's that happy. Too good to be true. You know, I'm 21. But what kept softening me was 64 women in the class. And I was the only man. So I was like, any teacher has 64 people in their class has got to be a good teacher, right? And so four years later, I, I had the actual experience she was speaking of. And part of me still just couldn't, was like, no, I don't deserve that. And last week, I talked a little bit about Gay and Katie Hendricks' work and the upper limit problem we all have. The Big Leap is the name of the book. Um, the Big Leap. And they talk about this upper limit. We get to an upper limit of joy, success, abundance, and satisfaction in our lives. And then we sabotage ourselves to get back to where we think we deserve to be subconsciously. And then there's a chapter that lists all the ways we sabotage. And so I, I, mean, I cried because I saw like getting sick and accidents were my two. Get to a place of success and then boom, the whole thing blows up. Accident, sickness, catastrophe. And then I had to realize like, I'm co-creating this. I am not a victim. I'm co-creating every minute of this because part of me thinks it doesn't deserve it. And it was just, this is a horrendous truthful moment with myself. And we all have them, you know, occasionally we're like, oh, the hypocrisy of it all, yeah. So that process though, from 25, what was that, right? Like, what was that? That was wonderful. I felt love. Even though part of me felt I didn't deserve it, part of me was fascinated with it. You know, we all have a committee in here. I got about 10 people over here screaming all the time. The other 10 over here kind of like Zen guy just going, I wish they would just shut up once in a while. But so it was 14 years. I actually found uh, from, from last week, the, was that last week I read the lake? I read the poem, the lake? Or was that the week before? Oh, yeah, it was last week. That was last week. Huh? Yeah. Whew. So looking that up then from the journal entries, I had a series of journal entries from age 20 to about 39, 40. And it was one of those. I was like, I need a journal entry, that meditation? Yes, you do. Yeah. All right. So there was, I ended up making a book out of it, 200 pages long. And then it was documentation of the awakening process. Um, so 2004, not Madonna. Uh, you weren't here last week? Okay, you heard the lake. Good. So you can, you know, you know the whole scenario. Yeah. Um, the little lake of Madonna is amazing. And so that 14 years had to know, had to find out, grinding it out, sitting a lot. And I got what I came for 14 years later. I saw what the dog and pony show was about. 39, So the last 16 years has mainly been about trying to deal with the repercussions of what it was that I saw. Because it was beautiful and painful at the same time. Why would it be painful? 
to realize the nature of the universe. Why would it be painful to realize the true nature of the universe? For me, it's it's knowing that I've been missing so much, that most people are missing so much, that most people are so asleep to it, that we don't believe in it, that we could have all this, is how sad we don't. So if you could sum that up in one word, what, what emotion would that be? Grieving. Grief. Yeah. It would yeah. be grief. Yeah. It would be a grieving process. Mm-hmm. Why else? That's not the only reason. What, what else, you know, would be a little it's scary just, yeah, about okay. seeing the true yeah. nature of reality? It's overwhelming. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. It's overwhelming as long as there's someone to feel it. Mm-hmm. As soon as the me falls away, then there, it's just a hollow reed kind of metaphor. <clears throat> and enough of me survived that awakening that um, he's still pretty intact at this point. Laugh out loud. Mm-hmm. I think it's sad. Oh, I love the counter. Well, why is that? Why is it sad? Because most of the population just doesn't have a clue as to what's coming and what's going on. Mm. It's sad. Say what he said. He said it so softly. You don't want to know. I said that it's sad because most people don't have a clue as to what's going on and what's coming and what's already here. On the relative, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, it's, um, that's part, there's a little bit of a grieving there too of just, just letting go of all these, a lot of pieces of the dualistic self is what it is really um and it every i mean when i kind of got my first awakening at 25 i spent the next 14 years probably reading a thousand stories of enlightenment i mean i was doing scientific research like is there a process here can it be duplicated you know no but the stories were amazing like some people would laugh for days and others would cry for days and Others would have a surge of energies and others would go into bed in the dark cave for a month and unable to move. And so there was, as Aja puts it, it doesn't have to look a particular way. Mm. He mentioned this guy, this big fat chef up in Berkeley. And he's like, this guy's as awake as anybody. Because he's living his dharma. This is my dharma. This is what I'm here to do. Um, and as one of the, uh, in that journey with those 14 years, I ran across this quote from this guy. He was in a very challenging life. Um, and yeah, like hundred years ago in China and someone's like, Hey, you know, like, why don't you change what you're doing? And he said, but why would I do that? Only I can live my Dharma. No one else can do this. And it was horrible, but he knew his place. Mm-hmm. Another one, this is a really good one too. A, a master uh, was living on Huashan up in the temples, in the mountains of China. And they, um, um, I read Chronicles of Tao by um, Quan Shai Hung, and he had visited this guy and he had no arms and no legs. Wow. No arms and no legs. <coughs> he'd been that way for about 50, 60 years and he's up in this hut, but this mountaintop up in the you know, mountains of China. He's like, wow, how, how horrible to be stuck here all these years. And he goes, no, 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 not horrible. He says, when I lost my arms and my legs, I could not escape myself. Mm -hmm. That's pretty deep. And the true nature of reality is that it's very liberating um, if you can escape your own stories about it, you know. And that's what he was pointing at. He was living, he was living his realization in a body that's pretty broken. And you see the prison work. I work with some men in men's groups through the Mankind Project, and I've done some prison work at Soledad and up in, um, what's the other one up by the way to the mountains? Quentin. Not Quentin, uh, Folsom. Like Folsom. Mm-hmm. And Aja Shanti has done some spiritual teachers go out to prisons. And, um, and Aja calls it the wisdom of no escape. Back to the guy with no arms and no legs. I cannot escape myself. That's what the silent retreat gives you. Think about it. You can't, you're, if you're sincere, you're not reading, you're not writing, you're not listening to music, you're sitting with yourself, sitting from five to 10 meditation periods a day, you're hearing some people talking during Dharma talk, and you're eating and you're sleeping. So there's absolutely no avoiding yourself. If you're sincere, right? I mean, you're just, you're just cooking. These layers get cooked away. And I remember day four of this one five day silent retreat, I had this thought I hadn't had since I was like eight years old. And then I did the very next talk. I goes, 
oh, we get to these, un, these deep silent retreats, we get to the bottom of the barrel of our material after four or five days, and because all the other stuff's kind of done, and then that's what awareness does, is it, it, it tries to fish out our darkness. Carl Jung wrote about this. It's not about being ascending into the light. It's about fishing down for the darkness. That's what awareness is already doing in us. It's fishing out the darkness, bringing it up, and then we have our drama in the dualistic world, but then we realize, oh, that's why that happened. We usually don't know in the middle of the drama, which I call being in the fog bank, and then you come into the clear and go, you look back and you go, oh, that's what that was. But in the middle of it, it just, I mean, it sucks. Like the 17 year old client I have, Brent, you know, new client with, um, and she they presented with foot warts, but it was kind of laughable. It's like, well, I got mole wart vanish. Oh, if you ever have warts, you know anybody, mole wart vanish across the board. I've never seen anything, anything work so good. Guaranteed results. They guarantee results. But for a hundred bucks, you get, how much does it give you? It's like, if you can visualize uh, like one milliliter, <laughs> it's like not even a drop, half a milliliter. So it's like, it's like they give you that much for hundred bucks. Of what? Of this wort dissolver. And the two main ingredients are unripe fig and unripe cashew. Very caustic. Wow. Unripe fig and unripe cashew. So I have an unripe fig tincture. I've never done anything with, but James, if you want to mess around with some caustic stuff, I got an unripe fig tincture. You dissolve some warts with it. Zinc chloride was in the original formulation. If you, if you know anything about escharotics, uh, zinc chloride was used in the escharotic salves to draw cancer out of the body. The eschar is the dead cancer, they call it. Maybe a mold? Pardon? Maybe a mold? Like a... Well, if you try a black stab or an escharotic on that, it might not. And then the mole wart vanish for sure will take care of that thing. But it, on your neck, there's a lot of nerves there. And it's like putting fire on your skin. So you have a wart, like I got one right here. I need to, I'm going to buy another thing and um, I'll put it on there and, and it'll turn white and burn. And then it'll turn black within hours. And then it just, the body is pulled, it pushes the scab off. And you're talking about green fig and unripe. Yeah. Does that burn? Well, there's a couple other ingredients, but yeah, those are the two main active ingredients. Lemon essential oil is another one. Um, Carrie Burr, actually, um, the owner of Breath and Oneness made this wart thing with just essential oils. And if you, we taped it on there and put the tape on it. I had a couple of works fall off with that, but she was unwilling to give me the proprietary formula. So I'm still fishing around for that. Laugh out loud. Okay. So there's these steps that our physiology changes when we awaken. That's the point of the biology of Kundalini is that there are people like me and this woman, Jaina, who's, well, let me write down her name because she's, if somebody can, I, I keep trying to connect with her and she's very evasive. She's very sensitive. Jaina Dixon is her name. She's on Facebook. I friended her and she friended me right away, but then she won't say What's anything. D I X O N, sorry. Oh, you ran across my, who ran across my horrible writing today? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's you, Monica. That was the. Jaina or Jaina? Jaina Dixon. Jaina Dixon. And we're giving Jaina full credit because I borrowed a lot of her work. So we're tying in from this is these wheels that we're in our dualistic self is subject to, but the larger part of us that sort of sees is aware of them. And we call that in the Native American tradition, the direction of the North or the sovereign, the spacious, because when they look at the North in our hemisphere, they see cold and dark and right. And so that was viewed as um, the big picture. So if you, if you lessen down the, the whole queen king thing. It's like the hawk flying above the land and looking down and seeing the meta view versus the mouse that can only see right in front of itself, right? You understand that? Because these are, these are large metaphors and this is the medicine wheel, which is really what, what I'm here to teach actually is the medicine wheel. And that's, that energy is the big energy. And so do you have good control over your kingdom, really? Your world, that's the sovereign. And awakening gives you that. But if you're used to the small view of the mouse, it can be terrifying to suddenly realize, well, I never saw the top of the castle before. I'm looking at it from the bottom. Wow. And it can be terrifying to see our own dysfunction so clearly. Um, I had, a, I mean, I still have a few like this call, like, 
on Wednesday. Six times a fuck came out. <laughs> so I messaged the group and I messaged my mentor, Kelly, and just put myself in check. That's what you do. Make a mistake, put yourself in check, correct mistake. Because I don't want to listen to somebody cursing. So I don't want to be the one cursing. Right? Um, so it's kind of like, but that's part of my awakening process is fire. Some people says water. And so on the medicine, well, I might as well just finish this thought thread because it, it'll help all of you understand. So the big spacious view of the north and you go along to the south. And that's the, on the medicine, that's the warrior. That's the fire element. This is more like air element. And so fire element, the job of the warrior is to get the job done by any means necessary sometimes. I mean, because if you're at war and you're a warrior, you know, it ain't pretty. I just love these people that they all glorify. You know, some people glorify war, fighting. And then really, you actually ever seen a dead body? Yeah. You're actually seen blood, your own or others? No, well then you're in the romantic stage. Um, like I said, I was a stratego guy. Was I talking about that at the call? Yeah. I love stratego. Remember stratego? Yeah. Yeah, it was a fun one. Um, so, but that goes back to another conversation we we're having on the call about compliance. So that's neither here nor there. So the other thing I got brought up last week is part of our this mouse warrior and this these views is when you embody all these elements well you become regal and i was using an example of one of the elders her name's belinda and i met her through um noel many years ago and she's probably mid 60s or maybe 70 and she embodies regal she posts on facebook you, you know belinda and she just posts about beauty and stuff she just posts like beauty here's this beauty do you ever go to the consciousness salon Oh, that's right, you were there. So she would have a little altar in a place of beauty that you could bring your eyes back to if you got distracted. So very regal person. And then Bernadette was here last week and you know she knows she's Spanish. So we I was like, I got fascinated about is regal related to regalo in Spanish? And she said, Well, regalo is related to the word royal, also related to the word present and presence. And I thought of regalo myself as I had seen this connotation. I was living in Mexico in 99, 2000 of having a connotation with the heart. And what's their word? Cortisone? Yeah. Cortisone. How's it spelled? Not How do you spell it? C-A? C-O-R-A. C-O-R-A. I think that's right. Corazon. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. yes. There's no Spanish. You got Spanish down? I don't either. So you got to Google and check it out. Let's check it on Google. So the point here is that um, oh, this is a good place for it. Probably not the night shade mineral stuff anymore. We really milked that one for all it was worth, didn't we? We have the nerves and the sounds. So Steiner, you know, Rudolf Steiner in Anthroposophy, he talks Posophy. about this. Anthroposophy. Anthroposophy, thank you. So you have basically three things that make up what we are. There's the air, there's the blood or the fire, and there's the salt or the earth. And so the heart, you know the word sangria? Yeah. Right. Sangria, I believe, is blood. Sangria, yeah. blood, yes. Right. So the blood is the mediator between the air, which are the thoughts, and the salt, which is, they call this in uh, alchemy also. So matter, non-matter, the sacred mediating element here that pumps all the blood. Thomas Cowan, MD, up in San Francisco, he moved recently because he wrote a book called The the contagion myth, he had to, he had to leave because right. you're gonna take him out. <laughs> I love this guy. So he has a couple of great books and he, I saw him speak uh, at the, um, the Waldorf school years ago up on Empire Great. And he spoke to this a little bit. This is kind of what launched me into alchemy a little more. I was like, wow, this is really deep stuff. So if this, this has got to be centered and well-nourished, 
And on a, on a couple of levels, if the heart isn't nourished, then, then the bridge is broken. And if you turn around, if your bridge is broken, you can't traverse the two worlds. So in Hindu, they call this reality, the greater world, which comes from this other bubble. And then they call this in Hindu illusion, the dualistic world we live in. The alchemists call this the greater world. They say it's not a value judgment, but it's kind of hard not to have a value judgment when you hear the word greater world. <clears throat> so the greater world, and this is the lesser world. <clears throat> and if anybody's interested, I got prompted to mention this. I've only been prompted a few times in my existence as I got this 15, 20 years ago. No, it was actually only eight years ago. So I met a man, um, a lot of digressions. I need to do it though. So I met a man um, at a Mankind Project initiation training weekend. It's called Leadership Training One. And um, I can mention his name, yeah, John Hernandez. And he had this shirt on that said International Alchemist Guild. And I was pretty deep into alchemy at this point, enough that and it's like, kept looking at the t-shirt and going, John Hernandez, really? So on lunch break, I went up and, hey, John, is there really such an organization? Or are you just, is that just a, you know, a fluffy little toy you got on there? He goes, oh, no, I'm in it. And so... Um, he spent the rest of that weekend training me as to what the initiation weekend actually was alchemically. So I had such a deep appreciation for the Mankind Project and in male initiation practices because of this guy's talk. It was astounding. And because of him, that led me into the more the hermetic, the more hermetic tradition of what these alchemists. So I, I, what I found through my research, though, is that alchemy had, had the same root as yoga. In the West, alchemy split off and yoga split off. And there's some rumors, not much evidence, that Jesus actually from 15 to 30 was in India. And they were, he was learning the Vedic tradition. That's why you don't hear a lot about his life from 15 to 30. I don't know, but it kind of makes sense to me. And then he came back with all this. You could imagine coming back to being trained by sages for 15 years in India. You know, Woo! The guy was you know, shooting stars and stuff and saving people's lives. They're calling it magic or witchcraft, but it was just natural law. Uh, let's see. Back to this thing. So keeping this balance is kind of where I come in um, and Gina comes in. So when it is in balance, you appear a certain way. And that's the pointer. You appear upright. You appear regal. You appear as royalty. And when someone's present, don't they, when they're present and they're happy, don't they seem to shine a little more than those who are not present and not happy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's what kind of like the last 25 years for me has been, oh, look at that guy. He healed from that. How'd they do that? And oh, look at this guy over here. He was, what? How'd they do that? And so researching processes. And sure, chemistry is helpful. But if chemistry doesn't lead you to the process, then the chemistry is worthless. What do you think? Let's use the photograph metaphor. You got 10 photographs of yourself running a race and you need to run a race. Are those 10 photographs of you running a race in the past gonna help you run that race? Probably not. They might inspire you because you did it once. But you see my point. If you don't see the process occurring that the chemistry is pointing at, just like in life, these words, this isn't, that's not real. When I say nerve, I'm talking, I'm pointing to a phenomena that's like occurring in life. This is out of Adya's book. You know? His quote is, at best, words are pointers at reality. At best. At worst, they're manipulative tools. Hint, hint. I, I love it over there. So what are the nutrients for the heart then? So I'm spending a lot of time talking about this. And uh, we do have... So let's show the, uh, so this is um, the flower of the ocean. I had a little extra salt and I, I, had, I made Soleil out of it. So Soleil is uh, something that Kelly Deary had a lot of fun with when I started showing her this 15 years ago. So she would take a jar like this and she would make a plastic lid, drill a hole in it and then put a little eyedropper. And that was their table salt. They had really nice looking jars on the table. Um, so point is, uh, what am I holding there? I was just mentioning heart before that. <laughs> What's salt made of? 
What else? Broad, think general. Minerals. minerals. There you go. Heart needs minerals. That has every mineral in the human body. That's right. It has 85 trace elements, including trace amounts of gold and nickel and silver and even uh, antimony and some toxins, which we consider carcinogens, um, aluminum, parts per billion, a tiny little part per billion. And so the heart then, one of its main nutrients is minerals, but specifically, this is the designation for potassium, and this is the designation for magnesium on the periodic table, K and Mg. Those are the two main um, mineral elements the heart needs more than the other two. What are the, what are the two counterbalancing teeter-totter elements on that uh, students can also try? What's uh, potassium's offset in the human body? Sodium. What's magnesium's offset? Calcium. Calcium, very good. Yeah. Calcium's yang, it's activating, it's warming. Magnesium's relaxing. Calcium causes muscle contraction. Magnesium causes muscle relaxation. Sodium causes contraction. Potassium causes relaxation. So I've been doing some magnesium research because of Morley Robbins and the root cause protocol. Again, uh, Noel <laughs> she turns me on to stuff. And then, you know, a lot of my people in my life, they say, hey, why don't you check this out? And then I end up going on, you know, for years with it. And this is one of those really fortunate ones because Morley is red flagging vitamin D3. He's red flagging ascorbic acid. He's red flagging zinc. He's red flagging all these synthetic nutrients. Why would this man do that? Who's been studying this for 20 years? Why would he do that? Why would he red flag all these nutrients? You probably already know, so. Because they're not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I won't put it up yet because I'm gonna give it away. Here, this will give it away. Because they're not good in isolation. Okay, that's, you're getting there, yeah, exactly. They're, they're not good in the synthetic form. They're, they're, we're getting, they're, that's right. That's right. So, I mean, I, I didn't realize this until the last five or 10 years, but there's about 25 forms of magnesium out there. And they all have a different sort of function. And it turns out the most important mineral, two most important minerals for your red blood cell metabolism are magnesium and copper. And D3, ascorbic acid, zinc, hydrochloroquine, a lot of these synthetics, they push those to the side. Because the body's always looking at, there's competition for receptor sites. And so calcium competes for magnesium. So if you're taking a lot of calcium, you're not getting magnesium in your body, which means you cannot get oxygen onto your red blood cell. A uh, little side note, 5G causes the same thing. The 60 Hertz frequency of 5G causes that same problem. The electron on the oxygen molecule can't get loaded onto the red blood cell due to a frequency, you know, it's bouncing around there too much. It's like a wild storm. It's not 5G, it's 60 gigahertz. 60 gigahertz, thank you so much. I, uh, like I said, I, I throw stuff out there and then correction, so thanks James. You need the, correct, the correcting influence. So these all have this in common and I was asked about ascorbic acid earlier. And so um, in Morley Robbins' latest webinar, they're talking about the adrenal cocktail and mineral drops, which are magnesium drops. So what he's isolated then is, um, I mean, yeah, in an acute situation, you take a high dose of ascorbic acid, but guess where I just got the manufacturing information today, James? Most ascorbic acid is made over in China from GMO corn syrup. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm We're saved. Even the stuff at Trader Joe's? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Trader Joe's is not a health food store, folks. It's a mercantile store. Trader Joe's never made any claims to be a health food store, not ever. Don't think of it as such, it's not. They happen to sell some healthy stuff, but they're not a health food store. So, um, you know, when they sell that much wine as they sell, I should tell you something. Um, so yeah, copper, the copper metal metalloproteins they're called, they're a big part of these coenzymes in red blood cell metabolism, it turns out. And zinc directly is an antagonist for copper. So, and copper is highly antiviral. Hmm. So one of my smart clients, he says, well, Craig, I want zinc. So do you have a, you have a complex that has a mixture of all of them? I said, yes, I do. We have, so standard process makes a zinc iron copper complex in a liver base. So they have, I don't like it, but they have a, they have a chelated rice protein concentrate of the, the zinc, the iron and the, uh, I don't like the rice forms because I'm not a vegetarian and 
paleo people need the liver form. So it used to be zinc, copper, iron, liver chelate, and they would isolate it from livers. But the product got so popular that they couldn't get enough grass-fed livers, so they had to get it out of rice. That's their integrity. If they can't store something well, then they're going to find a way to still do it organic, free range. And so um, they now call it zinc rice chelate. And, um, but the point is, is that they give you the ratio of what you need, the right amount of zinc to the right amount of copper, the right amount of iron, and then they put it in this giant liver base. So when this company does do a synthetic, they give you at least twice as much whole food base so your body can use the phytochemistry to absorb the synthetic. So I believe that there are operatives uh, in the health food industry, you know, like maybe even, you know, there are people that I might even trust still, but if anybody's singing the zinc thing and they're singing the ascorbic acid thing and the D3 thing, they're dangerous without this other knowledge on the side, because <laughs> these are nutraceuticals on their way to drugs and there will be side effects for long-term use. And I just told you one of them, because that's how important the heart is. It manages oxygen, doesn't it? And um, so this part of this awakening process, because you can't be present unless this thing is somewhat present too. <sighs> Stuff's popping in, so I'm trying to regulate what's popping in versus the agenda. So how do you know if your heart is running too hot? Sure. sure. Can't sleep, that's a good one. You're fatigued. Fatigue. And it's not hot, heartburn. No, <laughs> no, no. Just had to say it. What else? Is there, a, is there a visual something something you might be able to look for? This is my assessment system. I'm getting you guys excited about my assessment you system. You don't recover quickly. Recover quickly? Okay, That's, yes. Is there something you can look at on your body though? Yeah, the heart does show up in the face. The face would be redder. There you go. The tip of the tongue is what I call the heart-mind correlation. Uh -huh. So most people who are in, come into my office, this will be redder than the rest of the tongue. So you're looking for uniformity at the tongue. And so you'd like to see the whole thing be pink, ideally. But how many pink tongues do you see? Mm -hmm. Not many. <laughs> <laughs> see red tongues and purple tongues and orange tongues and yellow tongues and a few green and black tongues and hamburger helper tongues and smooth uh, runway tongues. And he, you know, I, I love being able to talk to somebody about this because so few people, if Joanne was here, we'd have a field day, you know, but. <laughs> so the tongue, the tip of the tongue then tells you whether your heart mind is running too hot. The redder it is compared to the rest of the tongue, the more, and I'll tell you this, I've been watching this for 25 years. It's a direct correlation. It's worth looking at. Every morning I look at my tongue, like, eh, oh God, not today, okay. Better eat impeccable today. Like uh, last week, um, oh my God, that banana bread you made. You didn't bring it last, was that last Friday? Or is that no, the- that was on Tuesday or Yeah, Teresa brought this banana bread and oh my God. It was day four National Banana Bread Day. And so there was rice flour, wasn't it? I mean, it was gluten-free flour that was like made of rice and like Right. So we don't, we don't know how, how fresh the flour was. So I, I had a, like three small pieces that was delicious with, you know, like when I, my, my thing with bread or these breads are the thickness of the bread means that much butter. So if it's that thick, there's that much butter right on top. Cause uh, so anyways, I uh, looked at my tongue in the morning. Not good. You know, it's like, I no, I, I haven't. Cause I knew you put love into it and this is what I used to do. I was a baker, you know? So it's like, wow. you know. Just, how do you, what was your issue? What, what disagreed with you? I, I felt okay, just my tongue. Okay. So, so what was the ingredient? Was that too much butter? No, it's the, the flour. Uh, the flour. And the banana, you said. Banana I don't do well with bananas. And, yeah. then, um, and then I ate avocados the next four days, which I was telling Monica, like I'm the opposite of her. She gets hangnails when she eats dairy. And then the banana bread, with the avocados and a few other probably skating along. And now I've got, it's like on the corner, it's not really a hangnail, it's like the skin on the corner of the nail here will, um, it'll dry out and then it'll flake off and then there'll be, I have a, this one's bleeding right here actually. And um, it's really interesting. And avocado, and too much avocado. Banana, stale flower food potentially, and avocados too many days in a row. But the good part of it was I was actually eating these um, raw fish salads 
that were keeping my energy high through all this. So I've been doing a lot of red meat and I've been on this adamant grass fed red meat thing from every day. And a little gouty toe and all that. It's like, okay, I better try some vegetarian for a little bit. And then sure enough, the raw fish, as I was speaking about the damaged protein thing, um, laying down damaged connective tissue with the cooked protein. And so the raw fish allowed my body to make some healthy connective tissue from undamaged bricks, if you will. Let's see. I got time to ask for a question, actually. Anybody have any questions? No questions? Thoroughly overwhelmed. We'll get to the punchline here in a minute. Oh, yeah, we're talking about the minerals for the heart. Okay. What else can you... Is it written down anywhere? Yes, it is. Okay. So you see your tongue's hot. Say you... Um, I do yoga every morning, so you know, I have a couple of postures I do where the one I told you guys about the hip swings. You just do this. So if I'm standing there and I'm out of balance and I'm starting my day and I'm, not, you know, I'm like, I'm out of balance, then it tells me how to set my day up. Tongue's hot, I'm out of balance, stayed up too late, shoot low, shoot low today, you know, versus, <laughs> <laughs> versus get up, do yoga, full of energy, full of enthusiasm, shoot high, you know, but I'll tell you the secret of success with people is Bill Walsh was a master of this, the 49ers coach for football. What you do is you give people low expectations. If you want to be successful in life, give low expectations to people. And then you always exceed. <laughs> Bill Walsh used to do it with the 49ers. He would butter up the other team. Oh, this team's so good. And we don't know what we're doing. You know, we're kind of lost. And, but the Raiders are so good. And then they would kick their asses because they get all overconfident and cocky with the psychology. And so, like I told you, I've been manipulating people since I was a kid. So one of the ways to do it is like, oh, I don't know if I can do that, you know. Scotty on Star Trek used to do that. Oh, Captain, I don't know. We can save the ship and can't go to warp nine. And then five minutes later, he's doing it. <laughs> right? <laughs> you kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. And that's probably where I got it from because I was watching Star Trek as a kid. I was like, oh, maybe I'll be like Scotty. Yeah. Yeah. And he saves the day. He saves the day in the end. What's your invitation? Oh, yeah. Oh, my mind is Scotty, too. Yeah, but give us, yeah, she didn't hear it. She wants to hear your Scotty. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Captain, it won't go any faster. You cannot do that. <laughs> you got the accent, bro. You have got the accent. Yeah. Scotty, Scottish. Did you love that? Scotty, oh, the Scottish yeah. guy. <laughs> you gotta love the pun. Oh, yeah. Green Roddenberry was genius. Uh -huh. All right. Um, I better get back to the. The heart facts here. So, what's a, a vitamin the heart really needs? What vitamin complex does the heart really need? B. B. The bees. Do you want natural bees or synthetic bees? Natural. natural. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, there's part of the B complex is yang, and part of it's yin. If you can, that's that's what the doctors at Standard Process were doing. From 1930 to 1940 or 50, they were figuring out because there's okay. Let's see. Let's do a little quiz here. Okay, so you know there's B1. What's B1 called? Thiamine. Okay, we'll put a T. B2. What's B2 called? Riboflavin. Riboflavin. Okay. What's B3? Niacin. Niacin. Yeah. B4? Pigeon heart block. Yes, B4. Pigeon heart block factor. <laughs> now. This is where things get a little weird. B4 is the fat soluble activator for B1. And Lee and a few of these doctors were studying this from liver. Liver is your best source of B vitamins. If you're a vegan, then you're going to go to rice bran, wheat germ, bee pollen. Um, sweet potatoes are good, turns out. Nutritional yeast, thank you. Nutritional and brewer's yeast. Although the brewer's yeast is highly dependent on how they're brewing and using that yeast, mm -hmm. what they're feeding it. Uh, okay, B4, is there a B5? So B4 is called what? If you look it up on the web, Wikipedia has it listed as pigeon heart block factor. They couldn't figure out what to do with it. They couldn't synthesize it in a lab. 
all the vitamins across the board, if they couldn't synthesize them in a lab, they weren't a vitamin. Isn't that pathetic? Yes. That's pathetic. So they couldn't synthesize before. Oh, it doesn't exist. We can't refine it into the wheat germ where we took all the, you know, when they take wheat, they take all the B vitamins out of the wheat flour, the natural ones, and then they add back the synthetic ones and call it equivalent. Yeah. What? That's why you see it, just farm animals will die. That's right. That's the empirical evidence right there. There, there was experiments from the 20s to the 40s and the 50s where we're mammals and they were experimenting on cooked protein and cooked food and chemicalized food with the animals and they were all dying within one or two generations. Weston Price was studying this. Yeah. The Pottinger's cats, Francis Pottinger did a study called Pottinger's cats, very famous study. And the cats were fed raw meat and dairy on one, cooked meat and dairy on another, and then zoo chow on the other, you know, the dry kibbles. So I think the ones on the kibbles did better on the ones in the cooked meat and dairy. So the ones on the cooked stuff could no longer reproduce after one or two generations. They went sterile. That happens with, too with, with humans. They had a, when I was a student nurse, we had a, a, a tribe in Africa that so they were studying and, and during the study, half the tribe moved in with the Europeans in the city because um, they had jobs and stuff for them. And in one generation, the part of the tribe that moved in with the Europeans started eating that European processed food and stuff. They, they suddenly went from 0.5% dental caries to 50% dental caries. They started having a huge uh, spike in heart attacks and obesity and all these diseases just by eating the white man's food, processed food. And you see, that's how far down the rabbit hole we've come is that the, the people in control don't even mention the connection between natural eating and your immune system. There's no mention of it at all. But, but you got to wear a mask and you got to lock down. So that's the red flag for me right there. Like, wow, we're, there's no spoken word or written word about any of this because they would, they, if we had, well, there, so we're going to go back. B5. So B4 is a fat, I'm going to get through this. So B5, what's B5? It has an adrenal thing, sometimes associated with the adrenals. You don't hear about it a lot. It's not a real popular B. Pentothenic acid. Oh, right. I'll put PA, pantothenic acid. And they sometimes use it for allergies, and sometimes they use it for adrenal fatigue. Um, but in my opinion, as Royal Lee said, the bees all come together in a matrix. They don't isolate, nature doesn't isolate any of them. So you might have a food high in B1, B6, and folic acid. You might have another one high in niacin and riboflavin. And that's what they were studying back to the, the yin and the yang. So Vitamin B5 pentose, what's B6? Well, B6 is B6. Pyrodoxine hydrochloride, not a real fancy name. B7, I don't know what that is. B8, I don't know. What's B9? Folic acid. Folic acid, folate. Folate. B10, B11. So they actually went through all these numbers. You could probably look them all up. B12, we know. What's the, uh, what's the Latin for B12? There's a trace element associated with B12, and standard process has a product called trace minerals B12. So what's the mineral element associated with? It's in the name, the scientific name for B12. Cyanocobalamin. So what's the trace element in cyanocobalamin? No, cyanic acid, yeah, but the end part of the word is the hint, hint. Cobalt. Cobalt is the trace element associated with B12. Cobalt. It's in Dan Wei. Is B12, it? B12, yeah. Oh, be done. Dan Wei. Dan Wei. Dan Wei. Dan Wei. Dan Menstrual. Dan Wei. I actually have some growing in the garden. It, it, when it flowers later on this year, it's one of those like, I mean, this is going to be an orgy of flowers out here soon, literally, because what are flowers? Plant sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. That's, I mean, that's the hard, when you see flowers out there, those are hard penises everywhere. They toast each other and look in the eyes. It's, it's, it's hard penises and open labias yeah. everywhere. <laughs> All over the place. Yeah, <laughs> it literally is, so it's funny. And what's the single yeah. most factor that causes the depletion of all the B vitamins? Very good. So 
these people know they're working with me. There's a there's a form that I have my clients take. It's called the system survey form. And there's there's nine, 10 groupings, and each of the grouping is an organ function. So group eight is called B vitamin deficiency syndrome uh, symptoms. There's about 15 of them. And alcohol is a big one. Alcohol is a big one. Uh, carbohydrate intake is a big one. That's why you'll always see potassium and B1 almost in all natural whole food carbohydrates because you need the thiamine to convert the carbohydrate to energy. But you also need the B4 to keep it from, because B1 is like lightning. So you need the yin factor to calm it down. Oh. And so when people take thiamine, especially in high doses in the energy drinks, because they do give you energy. Um, I'm experimenting with this cataplex B right now. And that's where we're going to, the punchline is going to go there. And there's a little bit of synthetic thiamine in the, the original formula I've been using for 10 years. And they made a whole food one. They just came out with it. They studied, I mean, they take two to three to four years to make a new product. And I was, you know, I'll try and be humble, but I'm one of the top sellers um, in this area for standard process. So I get privy to stuff other people don't. So I saw the videos of them making the product and they were, they were checking with a heart sound recorder to see if they could correct heart difficulties with the B vitamin complex, because that's how they made them in 1935 to begin with. Royal Lee was an engineer, one of his geniuses, and he developed the predecessor to the EKG called the acoustic cardiogram mm -hmm. in the mid thirties. And that's how he discovered the products were working so well is they would have a, mm, here's kind of what your love dub looks like. It goes up and then down and up again. And then there's another, and then there's a gap and then there's another lub and then a dub and then a gap. And so there's a distance from here to here. There's a distance from here to here. There's a height thing. And then there's a distance between these two. And they call this one S1 and S2. I just started learning this a few years ago. It's fascinating. So Royal Lee would see, someone would, it was supposed to look like this, but it would go like that. And they'd hook them up and they'd give them the, the B vitamin. And it, within five minutes, it would become regular. Are you digesting a B vitamin in five minutes? No fucking way. No way, Jose. Uh, F word, got one. <laughs> I'm going to give somebody five bucks for doing so. Oh, it's money. <laughs> get to the money thing. So they're looking at this, and the person feels better. So, Craig, being the trickster I am, I knew this was happening one day, and I, I signed up to be on the, on the seminar. I was over in Capitola a couple of years ago. And um, so I'm going to have a cup of espresso for this machine. And um, so I wanted to see if the espresso could register my rapid heart rate, right? And um, I come in and there, there was a couple of practitioners there. I mean, they're like, oh, it's Craig Lane. You know, it was so much fun to have the fun poked. And then, so I went in and he hooks me up and, and um, I didn't tell him I did espresso. I didn't tell him anything, but I know this guy. He's a good teacher. And so he's like, he's sitting there and he's fumbling around. And I was the first one. Like, so you have the equipment okay? Like, yeah. And all 20 of us are like, what's going on? And he's, well, I, it's like, and he didn't want to say it, but he goes, he goes, well, Craig, if your heart, what I'm seeing is if your heart stayed like this, the way it is right now, you're going to die really early. <laughs> he goes, it's not resting between beats. Wow. So what it's supposed to do is it, you know, does this love dub and then it's supposed to rest. But mine was going, and then a love dub and then a, so it was never resting. And um, I still didn't tell him, I go, well, give me the bees, you know? So when he gave me cataplex F, vitamin F, which of course it wasn't synthesized, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, vitamin F is a diffuser. It gets nutrients into the tissues faster. So um, I took vitamin F and the cataplex B and five minutes later he did it again and it was all smoothed out. And then I told him, I said, well, I messed with you. Um, I, Michael Gator was his name. I said, Michael, I messed with you. I, I did a cup of espresso before this. And he goes, oh my God, now it makes sense. Because you were putting all this electricity into your heart. Because the heart's an electrical organ. You know that? Well, were you putting the electricity in or were you stripping the minerals out? Because both. Caffeine both. is supposed to strip your body of minerals. Right. And so bees. could have that cause the imbalance yes in the b complex balanced it out that's right okay just curious yeah so james is right on to that we have a process of b vitamin deficiency because so when you eat refined foods like white flour white sugar well when you have a whole food brown rice 
some of those mineral elements and the B vitamins are in the brown rice stuff, you process the food. But when you strip out all those trace elements and vit natural vitamins, then the body is going to pull the vitamins out of your own tissues to process that and the minerals Survival. and the bones and whatnot too. And so there's always, there's always a couple of things going on. And I, I love James brought that other element is this, yes, it, it caused this fire, but why was there fire? Was it because I pulled all the water out of the system? That's one way of looking at it. And there's this thing about yang excess and was it false yang? What, what, yeah, yeah, false yang. Uh... Yang like yin rising, deficiency yang and yang rising. deficiency. Yin deficiency causing yang rising. Okay, so there's a good way to look at this, you guys. Um, these are like core principles of um, studying natural health. So you could have a yang excess, and we'll say that's uh, if the normal amount of yang is there, mm -hmm. and you could have a normal amount of yin. So that's that's the symbol for. Yin, for yang in our here. Up, upside down triangle yang. Okay, so that's the yang excess. But say you have um, deficient, yin, deficient yin. Yang is normal. So you're going to present what they call false heat here because you don't have water controlling the fire. There is still a normal amount of this, see? But it, see how there's a relative excess both places? And people like Jaunty and I, we were trained to see the difference between these two in a person through the pulses, the tongue, their inner view is, this is where most Americans are. Their, their fire, this goes back to the other house. The yin is the log on the fire. The yang is the fire. So what happens to your fire when there's no more log left? Fatigue. So what James is pointing to is, is it this or is it this? I mean, he can make an argument that's this. It's actually, it's stripped away all the yin, which are the minerals. And it appears as yang, fire, but it's actually a normal amount of fire. There's just less water controlling the fire. It's a key, it's, it's mm -hmm. False heat? Is that that's true heat? That's false heat? Is that what they call that? Um, yeah. Or you can have this. You can have it like what they say is. So th this yang tends to float up. Oh right. right. You're right. And so you can get like um, headaches or you know burning eyes or you know but you know palm he, heat. Ears, ears that are really red at the top. That the palm heat too, isn't that one of them? The palm heat. Right, palm heat, yeah. The palm heat. Um, and there's a fever that is intermittent, right, with this versus a fever that's a true fever. I think there's another one with the fever. Yeah, yeah, the fever's different. Yeah. Yeah, the fever's different too. And the tongue's different too, right? And the tongue's really red. Yeah. yeah. So that's part of the differential part. And so the things that we'll go, let's go through the things that really deplete the bees, because that's, that's what I tell my clients is it's not what you add in. It's what you take away to start. So alcohol is probably the single worst thing. And then white flour, white sugar next. Um, you might as well say anything refined. So I wrote a blog a while back called the four whites. So what are the four whites? Not sugar. Okay, sugar. white sugar. That's one. Dairy. What else? Crappy wheat. Ice cream. White flour. <laughs> <laughs> white flour. Yeah, ice cream. White flour, right? Cocaine. <laughs> white cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> white cocaine. Talking about. Got it. White cocaine. flour. Alcohol. White flour. White sugar. What else? So Salt. white flour is just refined grains. Right. Because right. it's only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's the problem with white flour. It's the same thing as refined sugar. It's just carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It's very acid. What are the other two? Alcohol, sugar, white flour, and what is... White sugar? There's two more whites, though. I, I, they're loosely white salt and white oils. White salt and white oils. The crappy salt. 
Highly refined salts and highly refined oils. Those are your four whites. White sugar, white salt, white flour, white oils. What's a white oil? Why do you call it white? Yeah. Because of this, the blog was called the four whites. Oh. White meaning refined. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, if you had a white oil, I'd be scared. That's true, actually. I guess, yeah, but it's, it's right. not like, no, it's not oil. like the wall white, though, you know? So here's the story that I went down some rabbit holes 25, 30 years ago when I was starting my career and terrifying information. But so when they were trying to develop margarine back in the 20s, the tens in the 20s, they were, um, you know, they're looking at what's the cheapest vegetable oil we can use and grow and steal from the tropics. So, it's, you know, cotton seed and these vegetable oils. And um, that's how I know they're, they're dumbing us down, too, because they knew what they were doing. And um so mm -hmm. they they just <clears throat> they they heated this oil so hot because they wanted they were trying to make solid oils from liquid vegetable oils that was the goal to make a butter substitute mm -hmm. that they could make cheaply and expensively and get us off get us off the thing that we really sure. needed right. and so they um sure. they they screwed up the first batch so bad that um they caused diabetes I forgot what the name of the compound was that was in it. Oh, wow. Then the next batch was gray and it smelled horrible. It actually was the margin was gray. Yeah. The nose knows if it smells bad, stay away. And um and nobody would eat it. They're like, what is this? Give me my golden butter, you know, like yeah, gold right. or gray. Like I'm taking the gold. Um so <laughs> yeah. And then that's when they started bleaching it and changing the color. And then they discovered the nickel catalysts. They heat up your, uh, we'll just say cottonseed oil, and they heat up to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere between 500 and 550. And they add this nickel catalyst, this heavy metal catalyst, and then it causes it to poof. And so there's these normal bonds called cis bonds, CIS, in fact. Uh, CIS. 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 And that's why they call them trans fats, because if the bond is normally like this, then the trans fat, the bond, oh, my pen's running out here. If that's your normal cis bond, then the trans bond might be. And that's how you make a trans fat. This was my, uh, my, my nutrition degree, my bachelor's degree in nutrition. This was one of my senior theses. One was microwaves and one was trans fats. I was on a mission to prove microwaves were shit. And I proved my point. And this was the other one. So I, I have sort of a PhD in margarine making so trans fat then you put it in a nickel catalyst and it changes this bond to a trans fat bond and guess what it gives it all the properties of a saturated fat and it causes heart disease yeah so there was your cholesterol and heart disease problem atherosclerosis of the 20th century was this these industrial fats we were consuming it's a chemistry term. I, I yeah, you, Carl would probably know actually. Carl would know. They took that study back a few years ago. They took the study back that red meat and dairy, full fat dairy caused heart disease. Right. Oh, yeah. Remember for years they said oh, that yeah. caused heart disease. Right. They took that study, they retracted all that a few yeah. years ago, right? Yeah. Not that not so there, much. there are still people that are that are singing that song, but I'll tell you why is because um if you study factory farmed animals and their protein and their fat content. It's a world away from grass-fed organic oh, yeah. animals. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, it's actually, I have the data on both. Grass-fed animals actually have omega-3s in them. These factory farmed fed animals, they don't have omega-3s in them. And that's one of the major causes of inflammation is the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 in our diet. But when that study came out, did, were they giving- They were, they were, they were, they they were, they were studying factory farmed animals. And there was enough of us around that were saying, hey, there's this other whole piece that if you study why would Agenus get 235 cancer patients in LA in Beverly Hills is where he was working years ago. And 231 of them lived another five to 10 years or longer out of 235 terminal cancer patients diagnosed by three MDs are gonna die in less than six months. Eating raw meat and raw vegetables. That throws all their China studies, fork nut knives into the toilet, doesn't it? Cured cancer with grass these animals weren't factory farm animals they were eating raw i guarantee you that so this is why i study results it's like well how what it's back to that raw protein thing 
even if meat smells bad, it's not bad because what you're smelling is the enzymes that are in raw meat are eating the meat for you. Cathepsin, we were talking about last week. C-A-T-H-E-P-S-I-N, cathepsin, I believe is the name of the enzyme. It just popped in. Yeah, you said it before. Yeah. You know, I add raw meat to, to cure a dental cavity and it totally works. Oh, and they say raw eggs will too. Yeah. Because the raw protein, if you're building a home, think of the calcium is, is like <laughs> the final wash, but the matrix, what do they call the stuff that the, when you're doing drywall, is that the, that's the screen, gypsum. The gypsum or whatever that hole that it sticks to, that the stucco oh, that sticks to? The, the stucco, stucco matting. wire. The stucco matting. So stucco the protein wire. is the stucco matting. Mm -hmm. And the minerals are the matting in our body. So you can't make stucco matting without good solid protein in your diet or a rock solid iron rock digestion. You know, like some people, they don't need to eat cooked, they don't need to eat raw protein. They can eat cooked protein, they break it down just fine, but they've got lots of acid and lots of pepsin and lots of enzymes. Or most of us in that place these days, probably not. I think this guy is. I mean, you could probably eat a cooked horse and probably do fine. You know? <laughs> I'm sensitive to bad meat. To bad meat. But it, only if it's cooked? I haven't eaten a whole lot of raw meat. Yeah. Okay. Well, raw it, organs, but not. Mm. Wow. I'm blown away at how much my body loves the raw meat. Yeah. It's really something, to get, you first have to get beyond the mental stuff. And um, I, so when you say raw, do you, do you cook your something rare or do you eat it raw? raw? Steak tartare. Oh, okay. Both. Um, both. Yeah, I like carpaccio. I mean, I've oh, cold processed over 160 pounds. Carpaccio. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. right. So one way you can eat raw meat is to make beef jerky out of it. You guys, one way to eat raw meat is to make beef jerky out of it. You just salt right. the heck out of it and then right. dry it. Right. You know, that's one way. You don't have to cook beef jerky. Um, just be careful of cheap meat. Careful I'm doing cheap meat. No, no cheap meat because it's got meat glue. I am not. Don't ask me later. No, don't even get me started. Oh, the meat glue. I forgot about that. You know, there's nothing wrong yeah, with meat glue. glue. That is a natural enzyme from yeah. both cows yeah. and pigs. Is it? From the stomach, yes. Yeah. yeah, I'll tell you. It's just, it's just. It's actually really easy. No pounding. It's been around a long time, too, hasn't it? I don't know how long it's been around. How long has been meat glue been around for? Oh God, that's at least eight, 10 years. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. It's a long oh, time yeah. and it's it, there's videos on it on YouTube. You wanna understand if, if, a, if a piece of meat doesn't look like a natural cut, do not eat it. Does it look like what? A, a natural, natural cut. cut. A natural cut. If it, well, it, we they, 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 sell, <laughs> they sell cylinders of meat the punch line here. that you can slice. If it looks like a perfect round slice, don't eat it. It's got meat glue in it, with which is pure meat glue, which is impossible to recognize when it's cooked. The facial for the audience on that. When it's raw, you can tell something's wrong here because the the grains no, of the meat no run into each other. There's, it's not a muscle grain that it's you know weird. is completely it's like, normal. It's like the pressed turkeys that they press all That's together, right? right? Do they put That's turkey right. glue in that? It it can oh, be it jerky. It's, it's like anything. it's like fish particle board. Ground beef. It's, it's like particle board oh, turkeys. They totally just horrible. Glue it all it's together. Like and I get their ground beef that they grind themselves there. Look every butcher in the eye and ask them to promise you that yeah. this is really a safe, honest company. And if they don't look you in the eye, do not buy it. Agreed, hundred percent. So, uh, could you just ask them? Do you guys put meat glue in your ground? Beef? They may not be the ones to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, but they grind it there themselves. It doesn't. It, it was. They have to know and be thinking about whether or not it looks wrong when they grind it. Yeah. And and I right. talk to enough butchers, and you get who cares. Yeah, do you just you know if you don't know, where, care. Okay, where do you go to get your ground beef? No, that's, that's the, I, I have Where gone to I have gone to New Leaf and Whole Foods and places like that, but I I mostly now found somebody who had bought half a cow and wasn't finishing it, and so the Morris beef, you know, where it was a total grass finished great one, that ground beef I know is safe. So what's yeah. going around right now with the farmers market thing, a related topic then is um if you know Karsten Muller, he's an old friend of mine through the men's organizations, and his girlfriend Erica, another woman named Jen Nomi. Jennifer Nomi. Jen Nomi's the one who's going to do the farmers market. Yeah. That's right. So Jennifer has been in touch with me, and um, everybody's excited that Colette left the market. Actually, and it's like a lot of people that are excited. So that's what we're going to end up 
we're going to end up having Jen has connections to um, some Amish farmers with um, righteous meat. So Jen might have, she might be our connection to better meat. Um, I've been going to Staff of Life and when, when Anthony ran the butchery, um, he was a, he was an excellent Italian. I mean, and then the owner of the Staff of Life completely insulted him, didn't give him horrible terms for his lease renewal. And last year he just, Anthony just stormed out and they went back to the usual Staff of Life kind of organic, decent, but Anthony had it at another level. And he was, he had local venison and he had, the best pork I'd ever seen. I was like, wow, I'm here sourcing that stuff. And he had boar and elk and all kinds of, you know, just different stuff, wow. like usual. So I, I blessed Anthony before he left. I had bought in like $1,000 from the Mankind Project. I was cooking for 100 guys over three or four days. And so I came in there with this special credit card, you know, they call it the PEX card. And I'm like, I knew I had some clout, you know, like, hey, hey Anthony, what kind of deal are you going to give me on those eggs over there if I buy $1,000 worth? And he was just salivating, you know. Um, but that's either here. Or not. I was trying. I was telling James I got to button this up now. So El Sarti Chero. El Sarti Chero, very good. Um, oh, and if you want to buy online, McAvoy had one. Um, North Star Bison. North Star Bison. That's when I had the cow adrenals, the bison adrenals that day, and then I had the stomach. That was that stomach story. So I want to tie this together. Then, so when your heart is working well, then I really look. We're, we're Bernadette went last week with, you present a certain presence, a certain royalty to you, a certain glow, if you will. And you do that by, here's the list, the stuff you're avoiding. So you avoid your four whites. That's first and foremost, avoiding those four whites, avoiding alcohol. Um, there's a certain degree of sleep that you're going to have to get and rest to renew stuff. So your heart, if you're not, you know, when you're tired, you're kind of more up here, right? Or you're, you're either too spaced out or you're just too solid you know what i mean too dense and what that in a minute? trying to think of anything else you need to avoid that's really a nutrient robber oh medications for sure i have all kinds of drug medication charts where it's like most of the bees most of your medications are taking your bees out i got book after book of this stuff so you know like somebody that's on drugs you might go like well you know I supplement with this and this and do cancer patients on chemo and radiation. That's what we've done. Like radiation, you obviously need more bioflavonoids and E and this. And a number of people have lived through these procedures through heavy natural food supplementation with standard process. Excessive sunlight will put you in a position of needing vitamin F and E, which I didn't talk about the F yet. So the F is related to the E complex. It's in all oils, vitamin F. And if you need or want, there are a bunch of articles on saleneriverpress.com about vitamin F, Royal Lee was writing about it in a magazine called Let's Live in the 40s and the 50s. Um, and so vitamin F has this, vitamin D has this action of getting calcium loaded into the bloodstream. And then vitamin F's action is to get calcium out of the bloodstream into the tissues. I thought it was vitamin K would bring it back to the bone. Bring That's what they say. But K is uh, <coughs> analogous to prices factor X. But it's not okay. just K. A is part of it. D is part of it. E is part of it. And F is part of it. And so there's, yeah, there's, there's, I'm, there's I'm four factors. Um, well, there's nomenclature too. And it's really hard to get past the nomenclature. So. F then, um, if you're, it's a, it's a sunscreen. So it offsets the action of D, which when you're in the sun too long, you know, anybody in the sun too long gotten tired? You know what it's like? <laughs> That's the vitamin D toxicity. Your liver isn't breaking down the vitamin D fast enough. So you're, that vitamin D is pulling the nutrients out of your skin, out of your muscles, out of your nerves and putting them back in the bloodstream. That's why you're tired. Because all your nutrients are back in the bloodstream. I managed this in college so well. You know, finals, and then you know, go, go lay on the beach. And, you know, I wasn't even, I was straight at the time. I just, the sun was an effective sedative. <laughs> right? So I think so much of F that um, I take 9, 12 a day. And then we didn't get to this, but there's a vitamin called vitamin G. What do you think vitamin G is? And she's taking Cataplex G. 
It's related to the B vitamins being separated out to a yang fraction and a yin fraction. So what's the, what are they? Vitamin G was a vitamin. It's now a B, but it was G. Which of the Bs was G? So they got riddle. Riboflavin. No, riboflavin was considered vitamin G. That's B2. B2, correct. So riboflavin is really interesting. It's ribose bound to a flavanol. Riboflavin. It's a kind of a protein molecule bound to a flavanol. It's really an interesting vitamin. So it turns out that riboflavin vitamin G, standard process developed cataplex G, which, ca which causes the heart and the nervous system to relax. Their cataplex B has a lot more thiamine, which is more yang, and it makes you have energy. So in my world, um, I got so fascinated with this because I think that some of us are, our bugs are supposed to make B vitamins, are supposed to eat our food and poop out B vitamins. And I think that I got, since I wasn't breastfed, I, I never got enough of that. So I take 12 tablets of cataplex B on a bad day, and I take it all early in the day. I usually stop before dinner, and it gets me all lots of energy. Even if I'm, on, if I'm not on caffeine, it's usually good. And then cataplex G comes in late in the day, and it helps you sleep. And it relaxes down everything. And it doesn't matter even if you don't feel anything because it's whole food nutrition. And you're nourishing your heart, you're nourishing your nervous system. Two things that need that, those B vitamins more than anything. So can I tell them about your experiment? Please. Okay. So Monica is going to take cataplex G tonight before bed to see if it helps her sleep. And I always have 12 Bs and 12 Gs in my pill box every day. And there's a lot of days I forget to take the G before bed. And that means I'm good. I don't need it. My body's not asking for it. It's been 10 years of this process. And so um, those who take six about an hour before bed tend to get drowsy and fall asleep and sleep for the night more than those who don't. And one of the whole food components of cataplex G is cow brains. So Monica's going to be eating cow brains before our dinner tonight. I mean, before hopefully, bed tonight. hopefully non lobotomized cows. Yeah, hopefully not mad cow brains. They're Wait, definitely not you mad know cow what lobotomized cows. It's illegal to test for mad cow in the United States. It is? A lobotomized. Yeah, Japan stopped accepting US beef about 18 years ago. Yeah. Wow. So it's rampant. Yeah. We're going to say it's something else. That's a right. lobotomized cow is where they've cut off the horns. Mm. Notice in other parts of the world, cows have horns the same way bulls do. Mm -hmm. All cows in the Western world are born with horns, and they are parts of their brain. And it's it's horrible. It's an incredibly painful, horrible thing that they do <clears throat> to the baby calves. They <clears throat> cut off the, the uh, horns to make them more docile because they don't want to be uh, gored mm -hmm. while trying to raise cows. So uh, we, are eat, we are drinking milk from lobotomized cows. Mm. Oh boy. It's bad mm. news. Mm. That's another, that's a really interesting one right there. Yeah. You know, you guys, there's this thing about, you know, animals and hybridized animals. It's like hybridized food, you know, and um, that's why Colette with Clarivelle uses the Jersey cows and not the Holsteins. She calls the Holsteins GMO cows because they're low fat they're low butter fat and if you want a lower fat milk that's great and that's what organic pastures used to use primarily and they got wind of all her jersey cows so they started adding jersey cows to their herd to have a higher butter fat milk um so that's why i chose clarabelle is because you, you see that cream on the top of the bottle it's like that thick because of the they're jersey cows they're more of an heirloom cow i don't know much about animal husbandry and how great a jersey is compared to something that's even more heirloom but you know, so be it. Okay, so I think we got all the foods covered. Then the final thing is that if your tongue looks pink and the face should have some color because the heart does shine out through the face and the heart does its will through our arms. Fourth and fifth chakras, the other shoulders, natural express, this is where we express our heart. And plants that have five leaves, like look like a hand, they either serve humanity or they help you serve your mission in the world. Mm. And that's why I grow gynostemma. That's five. Cannabis looks like a hand. Um, there's yeah. a plant called cinquefoil. The rose family is all five petals. Mm -hmm. Mm. They talk about the rose lines on the earth. 
Let me hear about that. Color of roses is five petals. Just some of them. It's just five. It's a it's a pentagon. Oh. It's, a, it's associated with the, the oh. because in in um, the plant family, the rosacea plant family includes all your stone fruits. They're right. roses technically. Yeah, that's so fascinating. So your plums, your peaches, those are technically roses. Hmm. Right. So, but they serve humanity, right? Because they nourish us in the summer with all those sweet fruits. Uh, gynostem is one. Another one that's really interesting is called sequifoil. And it's related to agrimony, um, which I've got a lot growing on the property. And it's um, this plant helps people have better psychic boundaries. And the guys claim, this is Matthew Wood out of uh, the Book of Herbal Wisdom. And he does homeopathy with plants and sees he makes bold claims and then he backs up with four or five case studies so in his book he made this claim that agrimony changes the conditions of life around you for better outcome very bold statement so backup case study agrimony is uh i'm growing it james so if ellie wants one but plenty beautiful yellow flowers and it's a rose technically but uh matthew says when you look at this plant you know it's a nervine because it it has little feathers on it and um it looks like something you wouldn't want to mess with <laughs> and so it's like stay away from me but it's also beautiful and okay where was i going with that agrimony um, oh yeah so the case study this guy um this woman comes in and she's going to be fired from her job in the next couple of days she she knows because she's got a meeting schedule with the boss so she goes what was that plant you were telling me about oh it changes the conditions and i don't want to get fired i need this money so he gives her a little pendant and a little homeopathy to take a drop every time you feel that weird energy. So 24, 48 hours goes by and she comes back and she says, wow, that was amazing. What just happened? That plant did for me. I went into work and it was the next day or the day after, but the boss was waiting for her for appointment and said, well, we're not going to fire you. And she's like, oh, really? He goes, but I don't like you. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer you over to this building and you're going to make more money because there's other job that just opened up in the last 24, 48 hours, and um, you don't have to work with me anymore. And so we both win. Yeah. I'm, I'm paraphrasing highly, but you get the gist where the plant, was it the plant that changed the circumstances or was the plant part of the change of circumstances? Or you know, it's one of those where you scratch your head and you go, oh, well, wait a minute. Wow. Did that plant really initiate all that? Or was it part of something that was already in place and then the plant got credit? for it you know what i mean right it's one of those where Never you just know. go like but he has enough he had enough examples of this plant doing this i was like all right so in homeopathy you have highly specific conditions for a remedy to work and you got to nail it and so i think what matthew was doing was nailing these people that was a perfect match for them mm. matthew had this hard on for finding solo single herb cures for people my tiara calls them simples you could build a whole practice just on simples, just single herb cures. And that's what he was trying to do with agrimony. Was it? And if you want to know two other plants that are part of this family of psychic, they help empathic people have better boundaries. St. John's wort is the king of all of them. This plant, agrimony. And then finally, uh, wood, W-O-O-D, betony, B-E-T-O-N-Y. I think I gave uh, Elliot a wood betony already. It's a mint. Okay. Um, but Bettany's thing, oh God, I could go on forever. Um, but mm -hmm. Bettany's thing is it helps when you have a headache from a digestive problem. So it, it unites the head and the digestive system, Bettany, but it also helps with psychic boundaries. So to tie it all in together for after a, you know, we got an hour and a half talk here, so mm -hmm. it always goes on, is if somebody's present, and they, they got a glow to their face and you look at yourself and you go, okay, well, I'm, I'm feeling uh, centered today. I'm getting, I'm feeling naturally <laughs> joyful enough that I'm not drawn to alcohol or these external sources of happiness. Then, and we can sit in silence and our nerves don't get all messed up. And we're kind of doing pretty good in today's world. You know, um, and, and being able to feel safe enough to rest you know, with other people. <laughs> Um, cannabis is part of this, but what cannabis tends to do is alcohol tends to sink you down to the lower worlds, 
And cannabis tends to elevate you to the upper worlds. Cannabis is disassociative by its very nature. Alcohol is sort of a, it's a condenser, you know, yeah. And you end up solidifying a little bit. Well, there is an element of disassociativeness to alcohol also if you do enough. I guess I better see if there's any questions and um, we'll stop there. But, uh, Fish oils are making those the human process? No. No, um, that's the whole thing with these. So fish oils are long chain oils. They're like 32 carbon units versus like butter fats, like six. So it's a short chain fat. Coconut oil is a medium chain fat. These fish oils are long chain fats. So they're really easily damaged. And when they're damaged, <clears throat> cis and trans there, they're hard to absorb. And so the word molecularly distilled in my world is a red flag. It means highly, highly refined. Mm. And I have people that are on the, uh, I'm going to pick on it and I'm pick on it publicly, Nordic Naturals. They're down in Watsonville. I used to support them, but I found out that they're molecularly distilling, highly refining their oils. And I have clients coming in on their oils still in inflammation. Mm -hmm. And they go on these raw oils from standard process and their inflammatory levels fall. That's how I know their products aren't working. So they don't have a functional product. Why? Because you can't absorb it. So it's going to be a slick bowel movement is what it's going to be. It's going to be whew, just grease up the bowels. So that's what happens when you don't absorb fat. It just greases everything up. Well, I mean, if you, you know, it just slides right out. It's an expensive bowel easy. movement. Yeah, it's nice. You know. um, spinach is the other thing you can do. You can cook spinach and it has a sliding energy. If you ever had enough spinach, you'll see it. Just, that bowel movement just slid right out of me. Do spinach and chia, and then you're guaranteed to have a slider. <laughs> so Katie's asking, is that bad? Could you take your Nordic Naturals to get better bowel movements? Oh God, no, I wouldn't do that. That's I, I just I would just do handfuls. Does of it make heat. you unhealthier? Yes. So it's back to on one spectrum of the oils mm -hmm. spectrum is plastic is on one extreme and polyunsaturated fats are on the other extreme. Polyunsaturated fat, monounsaturated fat, saturated fat sterols which are like waxes resins plastic they're all made of carbon hydrogen and oxygen and when flax oil goes rancid it goes over to the plastic side and what's rancid flax oil called in the hardware store yeah. linseed oil, oil. Yes. that's horrifying to me to think of putting a plastic like lacquer in my body because that's what these super unsaturates become like lacquer it's a finishing agent. So you just put some resin down your intestines and you could do just as good. Okay. Yeah. Linseed oil is a polymer of flax oil. P-O-L-Y-M-E-R. It's a polymer. And you don't want those chemical polymers in your body. You want real oil. So you're kind of getting a bad, meat, bad rap out there in the nutrition world, all these processed fish oils. Well, they should be because yeah. they're very dangerous used improperly. They cause oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. yeah. Big, big problem with oxidative stress. Michael McAvoy, when I met him 15, 20 years ago, he was anti-fish oil across the board, even the Western price stuff. What, what do you think? Having seen so many problems from all the crapulas. He said the way that they process them now is that um, the, by the time they get the oils processed, the livers have been sitting around in the air too long and it's already rancid. I disagree because I've seen results and I'm, I'm very sensitive and I've used the standard process stuff, which is generally raw, although they have a concentrate called Olprima EPA DHA and that's got sardines and mackerel they've condensed into a, a steam distilled concentrate. So it's not raw, but at least it's only, it's cooked under normal steaming temperatures at 212 versus 500 they're making trans fats with. Great question. Um, so that would be a problem too. I guess um, if you're taking too many synthetic supplements, then it would rob your body of some of these factors. Like tocopherol will rob your body of all the vitamin E factors. Ascorbic acid will rob your body of all the copper. That's, what, that's one of the uses of ascorbic acid, I was telling Monica, is to chelate copper out of the body. So if you have a toxic copper excess, then ascorbic acid could be very effective. So yeah, I would say refined vitamin would be another one. Um, anything in excess. Any other questions? Okay, we're going to end this talk.
thank you youtubers and ricky g for making this happen and uh i better check this one